Hey guys, Stealther! It's March Madness in Armored Warfare, and this is the ultimate prize. If you win 150 PvP battles, you get the BWP-1M Puma. Pretty much a BMP-1, it just has a slightly different configuration. So, again, what you need to do is win 150 PvP battles between um, pretty much today or the start of March and the end of March or the beginning of April. The exact dates are in the description and on the aw.my.com website. Anyway, how does this Puma compare to the BMP-1P? Are they the same vehicle? Um, not exactly. They have some slightly different configurations. I have both vehicles fully upgraded. The only difference is that the Puma has some upgrades in the sense of retrofits, but otherwise they're exactly the same vehicle. Now the damage that these things fire, uh, which is both heat rounds, is 361 and 360, so that's very, very similar. The difference is in the penetration, and that's interesting because they seem to be firing the exact same projectile. But the BMP-1P Puma, um, or bmp w one m one m Puma has 20 millimeters more penetration. Now this means that you can fire at targets at a slightly bigger angle and still penetrate them. And 360 damage is quite a lot for a heat vehicle or for a heat round at tier 4. Means that you can pretty much two shot, sometimes three shot a vehicle. And with a reload of 5.94 seconds, so let's say six seconds, you're only slightly behind the DPM of the BMP-1P. Um, at the same time, you do lack one important type of ammunition, which is the HGM. The BMP uh, 1M Puma, let's say the Puma from now on, it does not get the HGM. The BMP 1P does get the HGM, the 9M113, which means that you can penetrate main battle tanks from the front. The Puma does unfortunately not get that kind of luxury. You don't get any upgrades for the firepower, but your base ammunition is already very nice. Um, what you do get, of course, is a mobility retrofit slot and everything else is already installed. Thank god there's smoke grenades on this thing. That makes it really easy to get out of trouble if you need to. Now, what else do you need to know about these vehicles? Um, they're pretty much exactly the same vehicle in the type of defense. They have exactly the same armor configuration, the same armor layout, the same kind of modifiers, which is absolutely nothing. What I have found is that the BMP, uh, the, the Puma handles very, very well. Now I have a retrofit installed for that, and that retrofit is um, this one, the improved filter system, which is going to improve my max speed. So that's the difference in speed that you're seeing here, 57 versus 54. Aside from that, the camouflage is quite a lot better. The camouflage on uh, the Puma is 0.341. On the BMP, that's 0.297, so your um, camouflage on the Puma is a lot better. means you're harder to spot, and being harder to spot, of course, means being able to do more damage. Now, I have both commanders, uh, or the same commander on both vehicles, which is Sabrina Washington. What I don't really have on the BMP-1P is an upgrade to optics, which is something that I do have installed on the other vehicle. Still though, that cannot account for the distance in view range. The BMP-1 is fully upgraded. It has all the view range upgrades that you can possibly get on this vehicle. If I was to install the upgrade that um, gets you increased view range, so let's go with this one. Let's say I'm going to improve the Mark III on that. Of course I have to reload the stats because it doesn't know about that upgrade yet. You get a view range of 485. That is quite significantly less than the view range on the Puma, which is 525. This thing is an excellent, excellent spotter. Aside from that, your other stats are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the Puma is slightly less accurate. It takes slightly more time to aim, and you lack a little bit of turret traverse, but otherwise these things perform really, really nicely. So, let's take the Puma out to battle and see how she performs. Before that, um, a few other things. I have, of course, Sabrina Washington on this vehicle, who is a commander that's going to help me do more spotting damage. Uh, spot targets get less chance of being detected, all the, guts, all the good stuff. 
I have eight HE rounds in case I really come up against something that I absolutely have to hurt, but I cannot penetrate it with a heat round. I got all the consumables installed, and aside from that, I already briefly mentioned it, the Enhanced Sight Interface Mark III, and the Improved Filter System Mark II for mobility. Alright, let's take it into PvP. Now, what I have found is that this vehicle usually gets into between Tier 3 and Tier 5 matches. Um, if you do find yourself in a Tier 6 match, it's going to be quite hard. You can still do damage that way. You're just going to have to work a little harder. And for XP and credit gaining, you're going to have to rely on spotting damage a lot more. For your tier, you are one of the best spotters at your tier. This means that you can, um, if you want to, and if you don't really want to fire, just want to spot targets, you can do that. Especially with that high camouflage factor of yours, this vehicle can really spot stuff without being spotted. Of course, if you find yourself running into a fox, or if there's a fox on the enemy team in your game, it's going to be very, very different. It's going to be a lot harder. Now, match is starting up. Let's see what I got. Um... I got a few BMP 1Ps, a Puma on the enemy team, Swing Fire, Sheridans, all lightly armored targets. The one target I may have a bit of difficulty penetrating is their Chieftain Mark V. Aside from that, most of these vehicles can be pretty reliably penetrated. My team, Artillery, a couple of Sheridans, Swing Fires, BMD 1s, T72, and a Begleit Panzer 57. Now, with my high camo factor, as well as my great spotting range, I'm going to go towards the middle of the map because that's an area where I can get quite a bit of spotting done without risking uh, to having to, road, to move up too far. I'm going to rely on my camo factor. Also, by the way, I haven't mentioned it yet, but the camouflage on this vehicle is, let's say, built in. You cannot adjust it, you cannot change it in any way. This is what you're going to be stuck with, but come on, it looks great. I don't mind being stuck with this one. Now mobility, as I mentioned, is pretty good. What I have found is that uh, you are quite a bit bigger than the BMD one. That means that you are not as likely to be able to use all sorts of terrain cover to hide your vehicle. So beware of that. I'm going to slowly move up. If you're moving only at, uh, let's say, one quarter speed or one third speed, you're not going to give your camouflage factor away. So I'm pretty much moving around here at full camo factor. Really interested to see what Lazio is going to be doing. He seems to be taking quite a risk. I did not mean to knock over that tree there. Okay, so he's advertising his presence in the cap circle. Why would you want to do that? Hello. Got him. 349. So much for the swing fire. And another BMP-1P took out our swing fire. Probably this guy over here. He has a pretty good line of sight at the swing fire at the time. Again, moving up slowly. I don't want to be too aggressive in this vehicle because it is still an armored fighting vehicle. This thing is not great at taking hits. You do have a decent amount of hit points, Identify target. but it's still not stellar. 345, that's a decent hit. I cannot stay around here for too long, because I really got no cover aside from this building. If I can, I would love to flank this group, but with a Sheridan over there and a Chieftain still rolling into position, it's not really worth it yet. I know that the Sharon has a decent spotting range, but I will be able to outspot that. So casually traversing the runway here. Hello. Stop. Target, Target down. That's the first kill on the enemy team, too. There's the Puma, all the way up north. Careful not to move too fast. There's the Sheridan, but he's behind a dip in the terrain. 
Oh great, we got a Type 69 too here. If I move up, I'm very, very likely to get spotted and shot at. At the same time, I think we're going to have to make a move here. Missed. <coughs> that would have killed him. They still haven't seen me. We're losing 10 to 4. Or 10 to 14. That's a bit too high for me. I want to provoke that Sheridan as it's coming out to play. Oh, great, we're getting completely flanked here. Alright, here goes nothing. Smoke out. Alright, I'm kinda safe here. But I'm not gonna stick around for too long. Fire on the move, didn't get him. Sheridan, if he gets a shot off, it's gonna hurt like hell. There. The BMP-2 on my rear. That thing has an auto cannon. Oh dear. That's a few too many vehicles for me. Hit. Come on, he's gonna swing his turret around. Shit. Okay, don't engage an auto cannon. That doesn't really work for this vehicle. Aside from that, I don't think we're gonna win this match. Not considering our team placement and what kind of vehicles we have surviving. Alright, so let me just pause it here and wait for the result screen to come up. So, as expected, we lost that match. Still, 1192 XP, 60,000 credits, and that's without a premium account. I'm not running premium. Net, 53,000. It's not too bad for the performance that I showed there. Uh, made second on the team, mostly probably through damage, as well as, I think, some spotting, although not too much this time around. Let's see if I can get you an example of a bit more spotting. Now what went wrong there in the match that I just showed you is that I was uh, pretty much rushing too far forward. Had I stayed farther back and just tried to snipe weak targets, I might have been able to be more valuable to the team. Again, sometimes you just don't know. Next match is loading in. Look at this. Tier 4s, Tier 3s, Tier 2s, and a Tier 1. Um, that must be one very, very unlucky tier 1, because he's not even working in a platoon, so he just got dumped into a tier 4 game. It also means that I'm one of the highest tier in this game, aside from the two artillery units, Jalo and Amex 10P90. Opponents at my tier, BMD1, Sheridan, two artillery units, and an LAV300. With my spotting range, I can outspot anything on the enemy team, so I'm going to take this position over here as a spotter. Looks like Jaguar 47 is already uh, getting ditched by the matchmaker as well. Putting a T-54 in a match with these vehicles, it's not ideal, but you can still do quite a bit of damage to these vehicles. They're not very heavily armored. Driver, crank it. Affirmative. Gunner, scan to target. Affirmative. Driver, move out. What I personally really like about this vehicle is that it takes absolutely no time at all to accelerate. You have an acceleration of 2 point something seconds. It's really quick. Unfortunately, it doesn't go any faster than about 55, 57. Um, 56 now, 53. Your engine power is pretty good. It's just limited in top speed. So that is going to be a bit of an issue if you want to quickly relocate. If you want to quickly get out of a position and, let's say, hop from cover to cover, you can absolutely do that with the high acceleration. But other than that, don't expect to be rushing around the map like you are with a wheeled vehicle, because you simply don't have the capacity to do that. I'm try and get to the rock over there, so I can start spotting everything that's up on that ridge. And either die very quickly or spot very effectively. I've shared up there. Don't slow down. Gun depression on this vehicle, same as the BMP-1P, is a problem. It is not great. So you're going to have to use the terrain in order to get your vehicle down. Okay, he did not see me. Got one 400, that's a pretty high damage roll. An LAV-150-90 pushing in. Yep, he's coming for me. Come on, sunshine. 
You wanna play? No, he does not wanna play. He is getting spotted by me. Come on. There it is. It's gonna hurt. Oh. Well, not too bad. Got him. Ooh, artillery got me. Not doing too much damage though. They already lost sight of me. There's the LAV. Let's see if I can hit him again. Missed. Barely then. Shit. That's, yep, that hit him. Good blind shot. Pretty lucky. There's a scorpion there as well. Now I know I'm not spotting these targets, but that's okay. So as long as I can do damage to them, I'm still valuable to the team. What do we got here? A Patton and a PT-76. That's a tier 1. And a BMD-1. Okay. I've been hit by the scorpion, I think. By now, I'm pretty much a one-shot for everyone out there. Be a bit more careful. Now we're winning 10 to 4. Pretty much the opposite of what that was last match. BMD1's running away. PT76 is being left alone over there. He's gonna go down very quickly. Can I get a side shot between these train cars? No, probably not. <coughs> Alright, let's get up here. You can see that the vehicles does not struggle at all to get up here. Yeah, I'm not sure the pattern has enough engine power to get up there. Oh, great. They're going for our artillery. Well, as mentioned, I don't have enough engine power or enough acceleration or speed to get all the way over to the other side of the map in time, so I'm not even going to bother. That's... oh, never mind, he's dead. Type 59. Hello, Scorpion. Still owes you a shot. He's down. He's probably gonna get rammed to death. Yeah, he's dead. Type 59 legend. Oh, too far, too far. Come on. 321. I know I'm not lazing targets enough, I just usually don't take the time. I really should make that a habit, because I'm not using a very important ability of this vehicle. As lazing targets can really make the difference between winning and losing. Especially um, getting a lot of damage output. Apparently Zephyr is not coming out to play. Come on. Go ahead. Leopard 1's dead. M60, what are you going to do? The creature. He fired. Come on. Boo. Ooh, that was a lot of health. 74. That's all I got left. He comes after me and I die. Type 59, what are you looking at? Not me. Bit of a derp shot there, but I got away with it. There, that's better. 2800 damage. Now we're getting somewhere. See, these are the results I was looking for. 3300 XP, let's say 3400, 106,000 credits, netting me 102 because I had to resupply a bit of ammo, and um, apparently a little bit of supply, um, repairs, but other than 4,000 in cost, you just made 100,000 credits, which is nice. I only got fourth on the team, because I didn't really do that well. Could have done a lot better, but I was uh, both too aggressive and too cautious. I should have been a bit more aggressive at the start, because I don't think I got that much spotting damage. See, only 233. Alright, let's take this thing into PvE and see how it performs there. Unfortunately, no high tier uh, PvP. Medium is all I can do. Now the best way to get this vehicle is, as mentioned, to play 100 PvP wins. So how do you do that? 
Well, let's say you have a win rate of 50%, which puts you uh, as an average player. That means that if you play 10 matches every day, you're going to win about 5. And um, if you just do that for the entire month, you're going to get this vehicle for free. It's not really that hard. You can even use, for example, all of your premiums, play those, or your favorite vehicles, or the ones that you're grinding. Just play one match, get a win on it, get the times uh, 2 uh, for XP, get the times 1.25, I believe it is, for premium vehicles, and before you know it, you're going to have another premium vehicle. Is it worth the grind? Um, yeah, why not? It's a free tier 4 vehicle. I mean, it's not bad. It's a decent vehicle. I like it. It's nice and maneuverable. I just wouldn't say it is that much better than the BMP 1P. But of course, being a full-fledged premium vehicle, it makes more credits than a base BMP 1P, which is turned into a hardened vehicle. So for that, I would definitely try and get these, because um, the BMP 1P Puma, or BMP 1M Puma, this vehicle, is not the only thing that you're getting if you're getting these wins. If you get 50 wins, you get a million credits. And that's every 50 uh, wins that you get that. What you can also get for 100 PvP wins is not only two times that 1 million uh, bonus, but you also get a 14 day premium account. So they are giving away quite a lot of stuff that you can really, really use to benefit and start grinding a lot faster. Of course, these vehicles are really rather easy to kill off because they're just bots and uh, they're showing all sides of weak spots to me, making it very, very easy to knock them out using heat rounds. Players, as you've seen, are not quite that easy. Although still at tier 4 you have, well, let's say more than enough armor penetration, even on a heat round, to do a lot of damage. He's already out. He makes 10p, that's an autocannon. Be a bit careful with this thing. Thank you, gun depression. I hit his gun? Well, that was an unlucky hit. Scorpion. Nailed up. The Glide Panzer 57. Target hit. See, even a very well-angled vehicle like that, with 210 millimeters of penetration, is not a problem. And I know the vehicle isn't the most heavily armored <laughs> APC in the game, but still. Come on. Uh-oh. Alright, Starship is going for that objective. A superior T-92 here. One thing I found that the firing on the movability of this vehicle leaves something to be desired. It is not great at doing that. Oh, one shot. Oops. That was the Amex 10P hammering into me with his auto cannon. Another few rounds there. BMP 2. He doesn't have too many hit points. Come on. <coughs> Takes care of that. Identify target. Oh, enemy destroyed. Down. Leopard. Track damage. Okay, let's lace this guy. Keep control of the factory. Come on. Target lost. Target there. Hit. 414. Not bad. Identify. Hostile tank. Up. Target hit. He's out. Next. Threat destroyed. Ooh. Instant. Come on, you guys spot him and I'll nail him. Okay, I guess we're going after other threats right now. Direct hit. Next. Direct hit. Side of the turret. Easy to pin. He's out. There's a big light all the way over there. I'm lagging behind with the rest of my team a little bit, so let's catch up. 
Although I am in a perfect position to hit all of these guys and do a lot of damage to them. Ammo up. These guys are behind some buildings. Let's link up. Come on. Target down. Let's go for the secondaries. Still got one secondary to go there. Identify target. Hostile tank. Again, gun depression. Not ideal on this vehicle. Identify target. Oh crap. Yeah, that didn't really work. I'm gonna let these tanks do their work first. Come on. Hit on the Leopard 1. And they're both down. Good. Now let's go for the objective. See, if I'm over here, I have to angle the vehicle down. Simply because I cannot get the gun down far enough. <laughs> and even then, <laughs> I managed to miss the shot. Good mission, Black Company. All done. We will be able to use this area for resupply now. DPM on this vehicle is pretty damn good. You can do quite a lot of damage, and since you have a global retrofit slot, you can adjust this. Or actually, um, yeah, I think one global and one mobility. Let me check that. You can adjust this vehicle to your liking. I wouldn't go for acceleration, since acceleration is already very, very good. I personally went for spotting, so I can get more XP and more from that. Aside from that, um, yeah, you got one global and one mobility, so you can install a firepower slot if you want to. Anyway, I got 58,000 credits, netted me 52,000. Uh, not bad, not bad. The match didn't really last that long. Let's see, that took me, what, a few minutes? I believe if you can see that somewhere, but yeah, five minutes. So let's say you were able to do about nine matches per hour. That would net you about 400,000 credits per hour. If you would take it only into PvE. PvP, maybe even more. So, that's the Puma for you. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. I like it. I think it's easy to get it. Um, well worth going for it, even if you're not going to be able to get it completely. Even if you get 100 PvP wins this month, you're still going to get 2 million credits and 14 day premium. So, why not go for that? Anyway, let me know what you think. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed the replay and the review and that it was useful to you. Otherwise, good luck on the battlefield. Good luck getting this vehicle. And I'll see you next time.